if you have a new bike, if you have started to ride more often, maybe you're going further, faster, out of cell phone, don't have somebody to call you, today's video is for you because you need to be able to help yourself out on the road if you want to. Hello everybody, I'm Arlie with Bike Shop Girl and this is a Bike Tip Tuesday. And well, this is posting on election day, which I almost didn't want to put anything out, but you know what? We all need to potentially tune out. If you haven't voted, go vote and then tune out and tune in here so that we can get you ready to be self-sustaining out on your bike as you go further, faster into wherever you're going. This video is thanks to Katie. Katie just purchased an Urban Arrow and we were discussing what she needs to be carrying on her bike. And one of the first questions before we get into my everyday carry, I ask anyone that's starting to bike, when we start talking about outfitting their bike, so what are you really willing to do on the side of the road or the trail? And I ask you this because my wife, as an example, will call me no matter what. So when she goes bike riding with me, there's not much in her seat bag unless I want her to be carrying the spares that I'm going to be fixing. If she's riding by herself, there are snacks, some money, and a phone in here. That's it, which is totally fine. She doesn't ride outside of cell phone distance and she only rides when she knows I can pick her up or a friend can pick her up. So before we get into you buying a lot of stuff, I want you to truly think about what are you willing to do on the side of the road? And it can be nothing and that is fine. Just have the resources set up for yourself to be successful. Here in Colorado, you can be a triple A member and they will come get you and your bike, which is a really nice thing if you have a cargo bike. That was the first phase. Next phase is, let's say you are wanting to be able to do basic things on the side of a road or trail. I think about that as you wanna be able to adjust your seat. Maybe you wanna be able to adjust something that loosened on your bike. You wanna be able to fix a flat tire. Good basic bike ownership skills. Fixing a broken chain, um, adjusting brakes, you know, adjusting anything, maybe that's gonna be like 201 class, right? Not 101. Today is 101. So let me show you for that basic survival or basic bike ownership skills, what I recommend you have. So the first thing is what do you need to carry? Let me open up one of my everyday carry bags that I literally just pulled out of my pannier. I carry gloves because I'm always the one that has to fix people's bikes and they're always dirty. So I carry gloves, rubber gloves, whatever gloves. Big fan of carrying gloves. And then in literally almost every bag I own is a turn tool. This is my favorite multi-tool, hands down. It was recommended to me from like three or four different shop owners at an event. And it's now literally in every bag I own. It's in my purse, it's in my kid's diaper bag, it's in every single one of my everyday carries on my bikes. I love the turn tool. If you want a video on that, let me know, but I'll put a link below to this. Turn tool will cover adjusting bolts, being able to take off your wheels because it has a 15 millimeter, a five millimeter, and then an open wrench. So you can really fix most things more than you probably should. Like it has a chain tool, uh, spoke wrenches. Again, that's 201. Whenever I post that video, I'll link it up here. Next thing are flat changing tools and tubes. What we're looking at right now is my road and mountain bike setup. 
So I have my tube, the PDW Ninja, and this is really cool little CO2 and pump. So it uses CO2 cartridges right here, and then it's also a pump. And the reason I like that setup is, say you have multiple flats and you're out of CO2, or you totally screwed up and you're out of CO2, you can spend a lot of time and pump up a tire. I've had to with this Ninja. It's doable, your arms will be tired, but it works. So this is a CO2 and hand pump. Next thing I have are tire levers, the Pedro's tire levers, been using them for decades. This is my go-to tire lever and they come in a pair. The only difference on my cargo bikes, so you'll see I have two tubes, a 26 and a 20 because my main cargo bike has two different wheel sizes. The pump that I carry on my cargo bike is actually a little bit different. I don't carry CO2 on my cargo bike. What I carry is this Mountain Morph, which is a really cool pump. So this is like a mini floor pump. The hose comes off so you can move the valve to the bottom of your wheel. Hose goes on here. This little guy flops out and this is where you put your foot. And then you have a mini floor pump on the side of a road to get you pumped up. So on my cargo bike, I use slime and slime typically will clog a lot of holes unless I get a humongous nail in the side. If I have a nail in the side, I might have other problems. So what I can do is spin the wheel, pull out whatever gave me the flat, put the hole at the bottom of the wheel, let the slime clog it, and it's basically like running tubeless on a mountain bike, but you're running a tube because you're not looking for supple goodness on a cargo bike. You're looking for durable goodness on a cargo bike. So I use this and then if I'm SOL, I'll change a flat. But this still can get me up to volume pretty quickly. I also will carry this pump and CO2 cartridges and adapters on my mountain bike if I'm going far out, especially outside of cell phone service here in Colorado or Western North Carolina. I wanna be self-sufficient in those moments. So I'll carry a CO2 cartridge to get myself going, but if something's really wrong, I can patch, replace, you know, use this as a weapon. So this is the Topeak Mountain Morph. I do have a new one in that I'm gonna review, which is their digital gauge one, because there's no way to know when I'm pumping this to. I basically just do it to finger tight or hard. So I'm interested to see how that digital gauge one works. Just quickly recapping so I know I covered everything. I have a multi-tool. No matter what, I have one of these in some bag on my person. I have something to change a flat tire. That's gonna be tubes, a pump, tire levers, maybe a patch kit, maybe tubeless sealant if you're a mountain biker, but everything I need to change a flat tire. Gloves, I love my gloves. You can use rubber gloves, whatever, I love gloves. So we have everything in our kit. Now we need to talk about carrying it. On my mountain and cargo bike, where I either have a backpack or bags, I use these. This is the Green Guru uh, Recycled Tube, don't know what they're called, bags. This is the large, this is the medium. The medium is what I carry on my mountain bike. The large is what I carry on my cargo bike, because some of my cargo bikes have two different wheel sizes, which means two different size tubes that I have to shove in here. And then, those go into a bag, typically at the bottom of the bag because I hopefully don't need them, but they're self-contained so I can just pull that out on a road or gravel bike or a bike that I don't really lock up or have extra bags on. I use a seat bag. As you know, I am a biased fan of Banjo Brothers. This is the medium. This is probably the one I use the most. And the reason for that is not only is it covered in reflective piping everywhere, 
but the bottom of it literally drops out and it expands to be able to fit more stuff. When I use this, if I'm going on an extra long ride or riding with my wife, I'm gonna shove another tube in there or salt tablets or a snack. And it's just a nice feature where you can pack it like normal, but if you need extra space, it's there instead of always having an extra big bag. They do make bigger bags, just an FYI. So this is the Banjo Brothers seat bag. This is going to be part of a series where I'm hopefully getting you up to speed to be a good bike owner. Next week, we're gonna talk about the basic skills that I need to be a good bike owner. We're gonna be talking about more routine maintenance and being able to understand what's happening on your bike so that it's safe, so that you have preventative maintenance and you're not blowing through parts that you could be um, taking care of a little bit better. If you have questions, if there's certain parts of these topics you would like to be um, dived into deeper, let me know. My hope is, let me show you my really messy setup. Right now it has computer stuff all over it, but my hope is I'm gonna have a stand here, uh, workbench kind of style here without my computer stuff, and another view with a different camera to show you really how to be a good bike owner. Just as if you came into my shop and I was teaching you, my hope is to really help people through not only COVID but into the future, bike more and worry less. We all need it right now. We all need to get on our bike, get exercise, get that brain space. So Katie, thank you again for bringing up this topic. If you have a question for Bike Tip Tuesday, please let me know in the comments below. And if you're looking for any of the stuff we talked about today, I'll put links below. Oh, and hey, if you enjoyed this at all, if you got any information from it, please hit that like button, make sure you're subscribed and leave a comment. It really helps this video be seen by more people because that's how YouTube works. And thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.